Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Kings chapter 11. If you'd like me to come speak at your church, or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we ended 1 Kings 10, and it said, So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and wisdom, and all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. So basically we ended the chapter saying that Solomon was just richer than all the other kings in the world. He was smarter than all the kings of the world. And everybody came to him to get his wisdom and knowledge and to understand why he's so blessed, why he's so uh, smart and have all this money. And well, let's see what, what Solomon did with it. I mean, you can imagine walking into his throne room and seeing these beautiful statues walking up walking up to his throne room and he has two lions on either side of him or I like this picture better because as the lions going up the steps I mean you can imagine what you would think saying this guy over here has all these riches and wisdom you know I want to know what he has and I want to get that as well it says in 1 Kings 11 the King Solomon loved many strange women I guess basically if people are coming from all around the world to get your wisdom to get your knowledge knowing you have money women are probably going to flock to you but the Bible talks about this is a bad thing this is in Deuteronomy 17 when thou art come unto the land which the God, Lord God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall dwell therein and shall say I will set a king over me like all the nations that are round about me but he shall not multiply horses of himself neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold so he's saying that you don't want to have a bunch of wives because you're going to be spread real thin. I've got to please all these different women. And sometimes women, in order to make them happy, they want you to do the things that they enjoy, that they like. Genesis 1 says, And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he male. Created he him, male and female. Created he them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So God told Adam and Eve, Basically, you know, go out there, have a bunch of babies, refill the earth. And for some reason, God gave this more to men than women. I don't quite understand that, but men are really wanting to replenish the earth. Let's put it that way. All throughout the Bible, you're going to see this phrase, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, things like that. In Romans 1, it says, for this cause, gave, God gave up to their vile affections. And even their women did change their natural uses to which was against nature so in Romans it says the women they started cutting their hair short they started wearing men's clothing they started kind of you know being with other women males did the same things um, but women's job according to the Bible is to basically be the, the bearer of life take care of the kids be a nurturer you know follow your husband and support him and everything he does and a guy the guy's job is to lead and take care of his family and things started happening to change that. You know, a male lion will fight over who gets the girl. The male elephants fight over who gets the girl. The male cheetah will fight over who gets the girl. The male rabbits will fight over who gets the girl. The male bugs fight over who gets the girl. Male lemurs will fight over who gets the girl. The male ornix fight over who gets the girl. Even male humans fight over who gets the girl. Women don't have to fight. They just have to be there and say, I'm, you know, I'm available if you want to date me. Men have to fight to win the, win the girl over. It's, you know, it's perfectly normal for every male of every species to want to fulfill God's commandment, to be fruitful and multiply. And it's a, it, God created appetites. But just like all appetites, it's easy for the appetite to control you if you don't control it. Some have an appetite for speed that they can't control. Some have an appetite for a bigger house that they cannot control. Some have an appetite for money that they can't control. Ecclesiastes 5 says, He that loveth silver should not be satisfied with silver, nor that he that loveth abundance will with increase. This is also vanity. You know, when you talk to people who have money, what do they want? They want more money. You talk to people that have cars, what do they want? They want more cars, shoes, clothing. They want more of it, no matter what you have, if you enjoy it. You're always going to want more. If you have an appetite for nicotine, you just can't control it. 
Some have an appetite for muscle cars that they can't control. Some have an appetite for dogs that they can't control. Some have an appetite for cats that they can't control. Some have an appetite for video games that they can't control. Some have an appetite for working out that they can't control. Some have an appetite for drugs that they cannot control. Some have an appetite for Jesus that they cannot control. This guy has an appetite for collecting bottles and he can't control himself. And this guy has an ap appetite for collecting dolls and he can't control himself either. This guy has an appetite for collecting Pokemon cards. He can't control his appetite either. First Kings 11 says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zedonians, and the Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go unto them, neither shall they come unto you, for surely they will turn you away from heart after your gods. Solomon clove unto these loves. See, the problem is, is that if you go after women of other nations, those other nations have different ideals. Maybe it's political. Maybe it's sociological. Maybe they follow other gods. If you go after what they do, you're going to have to like the things that they like, or else they're not going to like you. He even had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as with the heart of David his father. So David had, or Solomon had so many different wives. The women just kind of got bored with Solomon and went back to their old ways. They went back to following their own gods. And Solomon wanted to win them over, so he kind of started following their gods as well. For Solomon went after Azareth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Melchum, the abomination of the Ammonites. You know, I talk about it in one of my videos, should a Christian celebrate Easter. So, this woman of fertility is called Ishtar. She's known to have multiple breasts. She's the goddess of fertility. In order to satisfy her, you have to be very sexually uh, prowess to make her happy. <clears throat> they have very, very names for her, but this is where the whole idea of Easter comes from. You know, it's the fertility festival. Bunnies, they multiply fast. Chickens, they multiply fast. It's the, it's the sign of the spring where all these things bloom. It's, it's a fertility festival. <clears throat> and this right here is the goddess that we're talking about, the Zidonians. This is her in many cartoons. You can see her in this little YouTube page where she's basically um, riding on the back of a dragon or something. She's considered a demon lord, according to this wiki. She's a succubus. She, she's intimate with men and then takes their power away from them. She's all over the occult. They even try to make her look attractive. But she's actually a demon. You can see the different pictures of her. Even Starbucks coffee kind of worships her. Does Azareth live in Starbucks? For Solomon went after Azareth, the goddess of the Zedonians. And after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Well, if you look at here, it says the inhabitants of Zidon, or Zidon, they were among the nations of Canaan. They left to give the Israelites practice of their art of war, and colonies of them appeared to have spread up among the hid country from Lebanon to Mesopotamia, where in later times they hewed cedar trees for David and Solomon. They oppressed the Israelites in the first entrance into the country, and they appeared to have a luxurious, reckless life. They were skillful at hewing lumber, and they were employed for the purpose of Solomon. They were idolaters and worshipped Asherah in their, as their goddess, as well as the sun god Baal, from whom their king was named. It says that Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not after the Lord as David his father did. And Solomon built a high place for Keshmosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hills that were before Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. You can see here this Keshmosh, he's also a, a demon lord as well. They're, he's protected many different ways, but he's basically a demon. And here you can see Molech. Molech is the fish god. Uh, the Catholic Church still worship Molech. And likewise did he for his strange wives, which burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So his wives, though they were with Solomon, they still worship their own gods. 
And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. He had commanded him concerning these things, that he should not go after other gods, but he keep not what the Lord commanded. God told him, don't go after other gods. And he made this big speech that we're going to worship God, and if we make a mistake, we want God to punish us. And so we, we, we ask for forgiveness and repent. And he went ahead and did the complete opposite of what he told the people to do. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as it is done to thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rent the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David for the father's sake, but I will rent it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I would not rent away all the kingdoms, but I will give one tribe of thy son David for my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen. So he's saying that all the kids that you're going to have, they're going to be divided, they're going to fight, they're going to be a problem. You're not going to have the kingdom anymore, but he's going to let one of your kids have, you know, a true kingdom, a kingdom of God, just like he promised his father. And then the Lord stirred up an adversary into Solomon. Hey, Dad, the Edomite was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass when David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the host who had gone out to bury the slain, after he had smitten every male in Edom. For six months did Joab, Joab remain there with Israel, until he had cut off every male in Edom. Then Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go to Egypt, Hadad being just a little child. And they rose out of Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt. And the Pharaoh's king of Egypt, which gave him a house, and appointed him with vigils, and gave him land. Vigils is basically just food. And Hadad found a great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him a wife to the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tephanes, the queen. And the sister of Tephanes bare him Ginbath the son, whom Tephanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Ginbath was Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard that Egypt that David had slept with his fathers, or David passed away, and that Joab the captain of the host was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, so I might go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that behold thou seekest to go to thy own country? And he answered, Nothing, how be it, let me go to any, go in, in any wise. The king, the Pharaoh asked him, why, why do you want to leave Egypt? Haven't I given you everything you asked for? What is it for you back home? And he said, There's nothing back home. But I like to go there anyways. And God stirred in him another adversary, Rezon, the son of Eliad, which fled from the Lord Hezagar, the king of Zoath. And he gathered men unto him, and became captains over a band. And when David slew them in Zeboth, they were to they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. You can see all throughout the Bible it talks about being against thee. Romans 8 says what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? See, if you follow God, you might you might have tribulation, but nothing can truly really get to you because you're under God's protection. Deuteronomy 28 says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the worship of the Lord God. Blessed shall he be in the city, and blessed shall be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and increase thy kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the basket of thy store. Blessed shall not be when, the, when thou hast come in, and blessed shall not be when thou hast going out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one foot one way, and fled before the serpent seven ways. He's basically saying if you follow God, God's going to protect you. And the Lord shall open unto thee a good treasure, the heaven to give thee rain into thy land of a season, and to bless all the works of thy hand, and shall lend upon the many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee all the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above all only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. He's saying, follow me. I'm going to stop your enemies, and I'm going to give you blessings with food and riches. And it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do his commandments, and these statutes which I command thee this day, that these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He's saying, you don't follow me, you're going to have some problems. 
Cursor shall be in thy city, and cursor shall be in the field. Cursor shall be in thy basket, and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of the kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall be there when you comest in, and cursed shall be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall set upon thee, causing vexation and rebuke, and all that shall settle thy hand unto that, that, that you do. So next time you think you're having a bad day, just think of the scroll right here. Luke 14 says, When thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot re recompense thee, for thou shalt be re re recompensed at the resurrection of the just. See, basically what people did back then is people would invite all these rich people to a party. And they did this, that way the rich people would say, well, he invited me, I have to now invite him. And so you throw one big party, and you get to go to 20 nice parties. God's saying, no, don't do that. Bring the people that can't repay you. Bring in the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. These people can't replay you. So because you're doing this out of the kindness of heart, you're going to be blessed by God. Back to 1 Kings 11, verse 25. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the mistress that Hadad did, and the abhor to Israel, and reigned over Syria. And, jo and Jehoabam, the son of ne Nebat, an is Israelite, Ephraelite, and Z Zenida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zua, a widow woman, he even lifted his hand against the king. So we're going to find out here later in the book about the two different kingdoms. And it was caused that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of the David his father. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went to the went out of Israel, that the prophet Elijah, the Shunite, found him in a in a way. And when he had clad himself with a new garment, and the two were alone on the field, and and Haliah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. So this guy took his garment and rent it in twelve different pieces, symbolizing the twelve different tribes of Israel. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord the God of Israel. Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and give ten tribes to thee. The kingdom was divided. You had Jeroboam on the top, and Rehoboam on the bottom. The kingdom was divided. I believe later we're going to see, and, and I could be wrong, ten tribes were on the top, and two tribes were on the bottom. You have Israel and Judah. And you can see here how the different tribes were separated. You had all the different twelve tribes of Israel settled in different areas. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that he has forsaken me, and I have worshipped Azeroth, the god of the Zidonians, Koshmoth, the side of the Moabites, and Malcolm, the god side of the children of Ivan, who have not walked my ways, to which is right in mine eyes, and to keep his statutes by judgments as David his father. So because Solomon chose to worship other gods, and not just worship them, but build idols and, and, and temples for them, God's going to punish him. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince of all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and I will give it to thee, even ten tribes. Because David realized that he made a mistake, and he changed his life and started following God the correct way, God even called him a man after his own heart. He promised his son David I'm going to give you a t I'm going to give you a, a place where I can dwell, a temple. But because you've done such bad things at the beginning of your life, I'm going to give it to your son Solomon. So Solomon made this great temple, and God promised Solomon, if you do certain things, I'm going to I'm going to be here. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make sure nobody messes with you. And then Solomon messed up. So God's saying, because of David, I'm still going to I'm still going to bless this nation. So I'm going to give one of your sons to be the ruler of Jerusalem. And the other ten are going to be in Israel and separate from me. And unto this son I will give thee one tribe, that David my servant may have a light away before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name therein. And I will take thee, and I shall reign according to all that soul desires, and I shall be the king over all of Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, and keep my statutes and my commandments, 
as David my servant did, then I'll be with ye, and I will build thee a sure house that I built for David, and I will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflicted sin of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt, and to Shishak, the king of Egypt, and was in Egypt till the death of Solomon. So Solomon didn't want this to happen, so he tried to get rid of the man that God said is going to be in charge. And he basically ran away until Solomon was passed away. And the rest of the Acts of Solomon and all that he did in his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? In the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. And for the next four hundred years Israel was divided and it had two kings and a lot of prophets trying to warn the people. You can see here the book of the kings and the prophets. The top up there is Israel. The bottom down there is Judah. You can see Israel here on the top and the different kings they had. And the bottom here is Judah. So Israel had ten tribes and Judah had two tribes. And you can see over here all the different things that happened. Well guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can send me an email or you can comment below. Make sure you like, share, hit the notification bell, all those fun things. I'm going to put a couple links on the screen. Um, on the bottom right hand side is going to be the First Kings Bible Study. The top left side is going to be the Exodus Bible Study. And the bottom left is going to be a video of the YouTube things you're going to like. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have yourself a great day.